friends, Brian here from Middle Age Mind and Muscle. It's been a few days. How the hell are you guys doing? Did you miss me? Actually, wait, don't answer that. Okay, I am going to delve into a difficult topic. You know, I was going through YouTube the other day and I was seeing the same fluff, the same BS. Again, not saying I'm better than anyone else, but with my channel, I wanna offer something different. And hey, middle-aged, meaning 50, uh, mind, wisdom, learn from your mistakes, you can share with other people, and muscle, getting fucking jacked! Getting fucking jacked! So, I was talking with a old gym acquaintance of mine, I'm gonna be careful, I can't say gym friend now that I've already told you guys that people at the gym are not your friends, but this person is good in my book. Uh, she works hard, she's a beast, we can't get it together with food. We had a little bit of a chat about this the other day. Now, before we get going, I actually want to ask you guys for some feedback. So my video of my response to the comments of people at the gym are not your friends got way more views than the actual video that I did of people at the gym are not your friends. What is up with that? I, I'm not I'm not complaining. I think it's great. I appreciate all the support. But uh, it was just kind of interesting. I'm wondering, like, what happened there? That's interesting. Anyway, so my friend, uh, she's very consistent in the gym. She's a beast. I think she's around 40 years old. Uh, and I know I have her on my social media and I was friends with her uh, years ago. Uh, I don't live in that area now, but we still sort of keep in touch through social media, I guess. She's a beast, 40 years old. She can deadlift over uh, 405, which is incredible. I know, and she told me the other day that she said, hey, you're doing great, you're killing it. You're really, really determined and really doing well with the whole eating thing and everything. And she was like, I, I just, I, I, I can't get it together with diet. I've always struggled with that. I gave her my two cents. Actually, I think it's worth a little bit more than that. I think it's worth three cents. But I want to talk about this. I want to talk about why most people just can't eat clean. And this is another reason why the whole naughty or not thing drives me crazy. You know, I, you know, I have nothing against Greg Doucette. I'm happy for him and his success. But I see more of his videos about naughty or not. And he goes into it like... I posted a video about The Rock the other day about like, so what if he's on steroids? Who cares? And people are like, well, it's about honesty and this and that. With the climate of our society about steroids, do you think it's okay for him to come out and say, actually, guys, yeah, I take this and this and these are the dosages. Of course, the negative impact he would have, he knows that. He can't openly discuss it. It'd be nice in society if people weren't so ignorant uneducated and not as judgmental where he could come out and say, yeah, I take this, this, and this. But we're not there yet, guys. So, hey, don't worry about the rock. Focus on what you need to do. So getting back to the naughty or not, one of the things that bugs me too is out of the whole equation, what is the hardest thing for people to do? It's eating clean. It's eating good. It's eating, eating for your health, eating like, you know, a bodybuilder, I guess. Most people can't do it. I know a lot of naughty athletes who can't do it, and I know a lot of enhanced athletes that can't do it, and you can take all the drugs you want. It might help a little bit, but you still can't out exercise a bad diet. I know people that will go to great extent with taking crazy amounts of stuff to try and make up for, the, for their bad diet, and it just doesn't work. So if we get to the whole core of this, is why can't most people eat clean? I can only give you my perspective, you guys that have been following my channel for some time know that I was, I'm going to call myself a high level athlete in my early to mid 20s. And also I had a period in my 40s. But I also struggled with food addiction at points in my adult life, in my 30s and in my 40s. And even up to last year, I got really sick a couple of years ago with the pandemic that was going around. And it, it, it had a lot of parting gifts for me too. My weight ballooned back up, I was back on the food wagon eating bad food up to 340 pounds. Well, I was able to drop, I don't even know what I'm at now. It's been eight months or so, and uh, this is the best I think I've looked since my early 20s. We are doing a big reveal June 1st, okay? Uh, it's coming, it's happening. So uh, I'm probably down about 80 pounds in eight months. A lot of people are like, I even had on social media being told, no, that wasn't possible, and that you're gonna make people feel bad about their body. Holy shit, man, I'm 50 years old. Give me a break. So, but why I was suddenly able to do this and eat clean and not look at eating clean as an obstacle. 
I want to talk about it and I'm hoping this will help some of you. I'd really like everyone's feedback and comment below what you guys think. Some people are lucky enough to not have the addiction to food, not rely on food for emotional reasons where they can just eat clean. Who cares? Yeah, I'll just eat good. But I don't think it's like that for most people. So when I was obese last year, up to June 1st when I got my act together again, I looked in the mirror one day when I was getting in the shower and I was like, what is this? This isn't you. What's going on? With your education and history of lifting, like this is not acceptable. And I got on the scale, 340 pounds. I'm like, dude, like you, you have to do something. You're going to die. What did I have to do mentally to adjust and change with eating clean? And the secret is what happened and what worked for me is I had to take a long, hard look at myself. One of the things I struggled with at approaching 50 years of age, you go through this weird phase of where you look back on your life. You look back on all your bad decisions. You beat yourself up. Why did I do that? God, I was an idiot. Why did I get involved with this loser who just brought nothing but stress and a lot of problems into my life? Why did I do that? I had to spend a lot of hard time looking at myself. There's a famous saying by Nietzsche, the philosopher, when man looks into the abyss, the abyss looks back at him. So really, I take that literally meaning when you look in the mirror and have to look at yourself, the reflection looks back at you and you have to deal with it. So I learned by really looking at myself and learning how to deal with my own bullshit. In my life, I was never into recreational drugs. I was never into drinking. I'm not saying if there was a barbecue, I might not have had a cooler or a beer or something, but that was very rare, few and far between. I even tried to like drinking a few times in my life and it just never worked. I was like, eh, I don't get it. I routinely see people hurting themselves every weekend with alcohol and they'll complain about how shitty they feel, but who am I to judge? It's not my business. It's just never my thing. I was never into smoking. I think I tried cigarettes once when I was 15 and I puked. I was like, yeah, I don't get it. I might've smoked, tried smoking marijuana once or twice uh, in my early twenties, hated how I felt, wasn't for me. But hey, we're getting pizza, we're getting Chinese food, we're gonna to go to the buffet. Now we're talking. Why? Why, why, what was it about food that really roped me in? Well, looking back and having to take all that time to be introspective of myself, I came to realize that I had a vicious cycle with food. This was my relationship with food. When I was stressed out, I would turn to food to help me cope with the stress. For a lot of you out there, you can probably relate to what I'm saying. You got high cortisol levels, you're going to crave sweets, you're going to crave sweets, and you're going to crave junk food. So then you use that and then you feel like shit. Now your blood sugar is all messed up and you just get into this vicious cycle as soon as you have to deal with stress. But what caused my stress? Well, what caused my stress? I told you guys in previous videos, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I used to be a sucker. I made a lot of bad choices in my life. Really bad. You know, you start dating someone, they treat you super nice. They love bomb you into next year. Well, they must really love me but then they pressure you to get involved on a higher level. And when you move in with them or something, then you're like, oh my God, what is this? Then your life is hell for years. And you're like, how the fuck do I get out of this? Never ending drama, stress, fighting, financial problems. People with a lot of problems, they're gonna make their problems your problems, my friends. So I realized I was in a vicious cycle of constantly making bad decisions. And then when I would get out of that situation, I would hate myself for making that bad decision. So I would actually use food as an escape, but reality, I was self-harming myself. That is what I came to understand. And when you're 50, you can look back at all your bad mistakes and go, you know what? I've lived my sins with eating bad. I felt like shit. I've been obese. I've been basically type two diabetic. It doesn't never ends well. It does. So, and people are feel entitled. Oh, well, I've had a rough week. So I can have this, I can have that. And they know they're getting into this pit of quicksand and sooner or later they gotta do something and they just don't. And then they turn to medication and pills from the doctor. Is that really a viable answer? So I had to deal with myself. Now I was explaining to my friend, I told her, I said, treat eating clean, like going to the gym. You know, and that's another thing about the whole uh, natty or not that bothers me is when I see people that really focus on who's taking steroids or not. Guys from my generation and girls, you know, who are in my age bracket, who've kind of come up with the iron, go to a commercial gym. Now, break my rules of just having your headphones in and your head down, 
but pay attention to people. Watch how they train. Watch what they're doing. You'll get what I'm saying. It's like, son, you need to shut the fuck up, not worry about who's taking steroids or not, and really look at the training you're doing because it's not effective. What the fuck is this? So, they say they spend the first half of your life trying to get wealth, and then you spend your wealth the second half of your life to try and get your health. Health is wealth. And it's very true. Things change as you get older. I look back at my life and go, man, I fucked up a lot. I fucked up my body a lot. I fucked up my health. Every day I have now, whether I live for three days, three years, or, you know, 13 years, I'm going to make the most of every day and make it right. I want to look good. I want to have my health back. But even more importantly, when I look back at my years, I'm pissed off at myself for my bad decisions. You can be angry at other people who you feel that have fucked you over and taken advantage of you. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But eventually it gets old. It's still negative energy. And then eventually you have to look at yourself and say, you know, they're losers. You're the one that made the bad mistakes in getting involved in whatever way it was. So what can you do? What can you control? Well, you can control your health. You can control what you eat. You can control your exercise. And you can control your life moving forward instead of looking backward. What decisions are you going to make today? I avoid drama and negativity and toxic people like the plague. I know it sounds cliche. Everybody says that. But, you know, sometimes I've had to make some hard decisions. You know, I had a very good friend of mine. We have to be careful with the term friend sometimes because if we feel we've had history together. But then as adults, we didn't really have much history. We still consider them a friend. But I want the best for this guy. Okay. But he chooses to be in bad relationships. Okay. And he had so much potential in a lot of ways, but you know, a few years ago, he got out of this relationship with a very disordered woman who controls everything about him. He's very miserable. He's very sick. He's very unhappy. And I had to tell him, I had to say, Hey, she's already tried to cause bullshit between us. So as long as she's in your life, I, I can't be there when she's not in your life anymore. feel free to contact me, but I'm not, I I've been with disordered people. I'm not living that life anymore and she's not going to give me her bullshit. So, hey, was it easy? No, but I care about myself. I've talked to you guys in my videos about other toxic people who have been in my life. I told you the story about the most toxic training partner I ever had. It's like, man, I got to fucking get away from this guy. Toxic people are everywhere. So I tell people who struggle with their eating, the first thing I look at is I say, what's their life like? Are they in a really bad relationship? Are they stressed out out of their minds? What is it? What is their relationship like with food? Some of you who've really been following uh, my journey, some of you might be going like, this dude's crazy. Like, why is he so hard on himself? Why does he push himself so hard when he trains? I've been out here for some time now. My extremities are freezing, even my penis. And my body's saying, you need to go inside. You're really cold. But now with weaponizing my brain, my brain's saying, fuck you. I'll fucking turn around and walk another goddamn mile, you motherfucker. I am mad at myself. All the years that I've wasted, all the years that I could have done better, I could have worked harder on my health, not got involved in taking on other people's problems. You know, maybe, you know, when I was younger, I wish I was more selfish. I wish I just didn't get into relationships when I was younger. I wish I just focused on myself and investing money. Oh, well, I can't do anything about that now. All we can do is move forward. But every day when I go to the gym, when I get up at 3.30 in the morning and I got the glow in my eyes saying, yes, today you can make a fucking difference in your life. I go to the gym, I push myself, I push myself hard. I hate to use the age card, but for 50 years old, I don't see too many people around who train the way I do. But if you do, my hat's off to you, and that's wonderful. But your health, every day moving forward, make good decisions. Don't beat yourself up forever about the past. At some point, you have to say, hey man, I own it, bad mistakes, but I won't make them again, and I'm moving forward, and I'm gonna prioritize me and my health. So I tell people, when you want to eat clean, challenge yourself. But maybe before you can do that, maybe you have to fix your life because if you're stressed out of your mind at home, how are you going to eat clean? How are you going to get up in the morning and work out? How are you going to food prep? How are you going to do, how are you going to do any of that if you're stressed out? Make good decisions. And sometimes you have to make hard decisions, difficult decisions, but in the end, it's to better you and your life. Maybe do that. I know it's hard sometimes severing a relationship where you're just not happy. Can you talk to the person? No, okay. Is it never ending drama and stress and disorder? Well, get the fuck out. Is your health and your sanity not better than putting up with all that bullshit? So I tell people, like, look at your life, fix your life. What, what is your relationship with food? It's there for a reason. If you feel that, that you need to eat all the time, is it because you're stressed out? Is it because you're bored? 
What is your relationship with food? Take the time to figure it out. Believe me, it's so much better when you eat clean and you start feeling healthy again and you're like, man, I was really feeling like shit for a number of years. Do you think that the food industry or big pharma care about us? It was funny, a few weeks ago, I went to do a grocery run and I almost felt nauseous in the grocery store when I realized that 95% of the food in there, we shouldn't be consuming for our health. But people don't know or people don't care. So I would see obese couples with their obese kids throwing all kinds of junk and it was all junk into their cart. I remember seeing, I told you guys in this another video, I saw a guy who was on one of those handicap uh, scooter things that they use going around Walmarts or grocery stores or whatever. All he had was pop, chips, and chocolate. And I wanted to look at him and I wanted to slap him upside the head and say, and you wonder why you're fucking sick. Take some goddamn responsibility. I have empathy for people who are overweight. I have empathy for people who have food addictions. I give consultations. If you need someone to talk to you who might be able to motivate you, middleagemindandmuscle at gmail.com. But at the same time, there comes a point in life where you do have to realize, I need to take responsibility for my health because my health is my responsibility and no one else's. So, to my friend who uh, is awesome in the gym, she's an ass kicker, look at your life. What is stressing you out? sit down and spend time about your relationship with food. I never go hungry. I know my caloric limit, what I need to eat and stay under every day, but all those calories are filled with really nutritious food. I feel like a completely different person. Aside from my aches and pains at my age, which I have from my years of abuse to my body and use of my body, I literally now, I, I feel like I'm in my 20s again. I really do. So that's my take on it. You know, this is cold hard truth might not be for everybody, but you know, as sooner or later, people have to sit down and figure it out. Do I want to live and set myself free or do I constantly want to be in this trap that I'm in with eating? Because really it comes down to your health and it comes down to eating. It's what you're putting in your body and what you're doing. There's no comparison. I would encourage any of you out there to do what you can. Figure out your relationship with food. Why does it have such a grip on you? You know, when you feel entitled, well, you know, I've had a tough week, so I deserve this. But then you're sitting there after your Netflix show is over, feeling like shit, going, I need to do something, but I don't know what to do. If you need to talk, middleagedmindandmuscle at gmail.com. I hope that helps, guys. And for my friend who works really hard in the gym, I know she can do it. I really, really want to see that for her, too. All of us are stronger than we realize. I truly believe that. But you're the one who has to bring it out of yourself. You got the negative voice in your head who always comes up with excuses. Sometimes you just want to look at it and start saying, fuck off. Get into the habit of saying that every morning when it's time to get up and go to the gym. That's a good place to start. What do you guys think? Comment below. I appreciate everyone who takes the time to like a video, share a video, and you know what? YouTube now, it's harder and harder to get people to subscribe, but everyone who clicks subscribe, I really appreciate it. I hope you get some, I hope you get some value out of my videos and my channel. Lots more to come. Let me know what you think. And remember, this is my therapy.